All right, we're back with another GBC module review, and this one is very special. This is the Akiyuki Pneumatic module. I've never really heard it called anything other than that, um, <laughs> but this is one of my favorite modules. It was an absolute blast to build, and it did take a bit of troubleshooting, <laughs> quite a bit, um, but I'll share all of that in this video. Um, that's why I'm making it. And don't say I never did anything for you guys because I, I brought all this downstairs, all this infrastructure downstairs just for this video. Um, you know, I only have uh, the two manometers or uh, pressure gauges, uh, so I brought them downstairs. <laughs> I brought the whole thing downstairs instead of disassembling all this stuff. Normally, this module has a small pump down here with two of the small pneumatic pumps and, and it just runs. Um, and pumps its own air but me being me i built all this stuff <laughs> uh and it just uses this pump here this is six of the newest version of the pneumatic pump so they have the square ends and i usually build up to about um 20 psi maybe a little bit above that and i also have a bunch of tanks back here that are filled with air and it runs really good after that because I've, I've seen a lot of people build this and when you have the little pump at the bottom there's no tanks there's no reserve air so it seems to kind of affect the speed of the module where you know it, one action will move quickly and then it'll slowly and it's still going to do that even with all this but i think it works pretty good the other issue i had was it would return way too quickly and it still kind of does i'm still kind of working on that um, when it makes that left turn it uh slams into this piece here this beam um, and the whole module likes to to twist and turn a bit um, should do all right now because we're on a rubber mat but oops one thing i did um, these are the from the tread pieces um, it's just a piece of rubber. Um, so I stuck those all over the bottom. Um, I even got a couple out here at the ends um, just to help a little bit and, uh, and make sure the module stays somewhat stable. It's still not perfect. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm just kind of sharing my journey with this. I'm sure there are better solutions out there. Another thing I did to combat it turning too fast is implemented a adjustable pressure regulator. Um, let's see if we can get a good view of that because it is upside down. <laughs> um, so this just uses a worm gear and then this uh, Technic link piece, whatever it's called, and that just squishes down on the wall, <laughs> on the tubing, uh, and you can adjust the pressure a bit. So the line that runs down here is actually what goes to the bottom of the cylinder that actually it controls the rotation. Um, it takes a little bit to get it to, to work right. You know, you'll adjust it in and out and in and out until you get it just right because it's a very small adjustment. It's, it's, it's a little bit tedious to get it just right. But in the end, I think it helps. You know, I'm still kind of playing with this one. And one thing I didn't think about, because I was trying to slow the rotation in this direction, but I wasn't as worried about the other direction. But you got to think about, um, you know, these hose, this hose is going to be used bi-directionally. So even if, if it's pushing air, you know, it's going to push it out. But even when it's returning, the air has to return through here because the pressure is actually purged inside of the valve here, not on the cylinder. So it's not as one way as I would have liked it to be. Again, with these pneumatic cylinders, uh, you've just got a pressure plate in there. And on one side, you've got the post coming out. And because of that, there's a lot more area for the air to push on from this direction than there is from that direction. So that's another idiosyncrasy, uh, you know, with the pneumatics. <laughs> So let's go ahead and run some, some balls through it. I haven't run it since I moved it downstairs, so it's likely that we may have some issues. Um, let's see, so I'll get my pump going. Uh, when we get up to about 24-ish uh, PSI, 
we'll come back and uh, start it running. All right, we're just about there. We're at about 22. Um, so what I can do is enable air one and that controls the valve there. And that will start it running. Get a tripod here and it's already stuck. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Um, I don't know how this got flipped up. All right. So one deficiency is the input bin can only hold so many. Um, you don't want to overload it. So I'm just going to be dropping them in a few at a time. So there's a good, I think it's about eight. And it's working pretty good today. Well, of course I say that. <laughs> so what happened there is a ball got stuck under. I'm not sure. I don't know what happened. I'll have to look at the footage. <laughs> look at the instant replay and see what happened there. Uh, we get caught again. Okay, I don't know what happened there. But... <clears throat> It's, all right, what is happening? <laughs> Sometimes it can get a little bit out of adjustment um, where the, the teeth get locked together. Um, well, shoot. <laughs> but generally, you know, there's a little bit of, um, especially, I just moved this downstairs. So if you're just setting up, uh, you know, at a convention or on a table, you'll probably have to do a little bit of adjustment to get it working right. Um, and just while we're here, I don't, I'm not, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it just for the video. Um, so I'm going to back this adjustable pressure gauge out. Okay. So it's not pinching at all. On, on the hose here. So this, it's going to be unregulated. Let's see what happens when I enable the air again. You see how fast that it's turning. I don't know what that creaking noise is. Something, something's out of alignment. I don't know why it's not wanting to go up. Um, Definitely acting a little bit strange now. <laughs> um, but like this turn there is, uh, I think, a lot faster. So I tend to make little adjustments on this, on this rear section here until it starts working better. I guess it was, it's a little low on pressure because I had the pump off for a little bit there. I'm going to turn the pump off and let it build up a little more. All right, so we're about at 25 PSI now. But uh, so just how it slams into that side, that's what I'm trying to alleviate because it'll bounce back and get caught under here. Okay, <laughs> calm down. All right, so I'm going to tighten it up a little more. Tighten up a little more. I see these are much more controlled rotation movements. Um, so that's why I, I threw that on there. And then you don't have to be, you know, tied to a specific uh, air input. You know, you can just, you can make little adjustments until you get it just right. The up and down seems to be fine for the most part. I've never really had issues there. Oh, that was kind of a lot there, but I don't know what is. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You see what happens is the whole module twists if it, if it's, you know, moving too fast and then it gets out of alignment from your, oh, from the next module or, you know, that kind of thing. And we'll just go ahead and shut it off. 
Uh, one other change that I made is in this A-frame assembly here. I think it's slightly off from the instructions. And again, these instructions were reverse engineered. Um, I'm drawing a blank on, on <laughs> who those were, but uh, it's all going to be in the description, um, links to the instructions and to Akiyuki's YouTube channel and all that. But I did hear from a friend who had built it. They said they had, they had made a slight adjustment with this and everything started working fine. Um, so it's possible maybe the instructions are off by, you know, one, one stud or something like that. Um, and I don't remember which direction or anything uh, that I did change it in. So I guess while, while we're on the subject, let's just uh, get a nice close up here. So for this cross beam, you just skip one there and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it goes to that. Uh, and then from this seven length beam, skip one on that side and skip two on that side. And that, that's what worked for me. Um, again, I'm no expert, but I, once I do a, a small amount of tweaking, this thing runs great. It's actually one of the more reliable modules out of all the ones that I run. And I do run it a little bit differently than others. So that's why I wanted to make this video and just kind of share my findings and experience with it. It's definitely one of those, it's, it's just mesmerizing to watch. And it's just amazing to think that all it is is just an air input. That's all it is. You know, once, once one of the cylinders reaches the end of its travel, it's going to flip the switch and the other cylinder is going to do its part and then switch back and, and control the other. It's just designed very, very well. So I think that's it for now. Um, like I said, the, the main thing I really wanted to share was this variable pressure regulator. I think that is so cool and it was so handy uh, for getting this working better. Um, I wish I could credit uh, who gave me that idea. You know, it was a picture I saw online <laughs> eight, 10 years ago. So I have no clue <laughs> who to credit for that. But um, stroke of genius, it's a very simple mechanism and it definitely can help in, and especially in cases like this because you don't want to limit pressure to the up and down cylinder because that's gonna that takes a little more work uh oh one other thing i did take the turntable apart um eventually you know before i didn't and it worked very well um, i guess after the turntable gets a little bit of wear you know you're gonna have some abs dust in there and it's just gonna slow things down um, so i did take the two pieces apart uh, cleaned it and then used a small amount of lubricant. Um, I know most people will use a silicone based lubricant. Um, this is the same stuff I've been using for a long time because I use this on my monorail switch tracks and if it can get those working well, it can, <laughs> it can fix anything. And I haven't had any issues with it degrading or, or you know, any of those breaking and th those switch tracks still work uh, well all the way up to the present day. I first lubricated my first pair uh, like at least five or six years ago. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any of that, uh, you know, be sure to comment below. And above all else, remember to play well.